I apologize that I am late. I had forgotten that last night because of the storm, I moved my tomato plants and put them on top of the table under the tent because I don't have stakes holding them up. So I was afraid that the, the heavy rain was just going to break my plants. <laughs> so I came out here and found out I had to move all the plants I had put over here. But praise God, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We have a faithful God who loves us and cares for us and understands. You know, in our weaknesses, he's made strong. It is the power of his word. It is his Holy Spirit that will minister to us today. It's not in how perfect everything is. It's in our hearts. Are they toward God? Is everything that we do done in a way that we feel in our hearts? Lord, I want to honor you with all my life. Because that's, that's what God is looking for. It's not the amount of things. It's the heart desire. It is what are you doing in your heart. Because there can be somebody who's doing a whole lot of things for the Lord, but in their heart they're complaining, wishing they were doing something else. See, God knows those things. He knows. God knows the heart that is having to work doing other stuff. But in their heart, all they want to be doing is being in the house of the Lord, worshiping God, doing things for Him. God knows our hearts. And that's, that's what He's concerned with. This flesh, one day, will pass away. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that this morning. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We're here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. Uh, yesterday I got to watch, and I mean watch, I couldn't hear because I was at work, so I was reading some of the things that they were saying on Queen Elizabeth's funeral. And I thought, you know, that's a sister in Christ. She had made the commitment to serve God. She was a servant leader because of that commitment. Did everyone like her? Nope. But the, not everyone liked Jesus. There's going to be people that don't like the light of Christ in you. You know, and sometimes we make decisions and it's like, oh, I wish I had not done that. You know, we have an example of King David with the mistake he'd made with Bathsheba. But yet God is full of mercy and grace. And when we make those mistakes, it comes back to the heart. If in our heart we are repentive, God forgives us. He is not there to hammer you down. He is there to lift you up. God loves you. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father by him. If we reach out to Christ, he is there to pick us up. The question I had written down was, what will you lay at Jesus' feet? Because whatever he called us to do, we do to honor him. It is the crown we can lay at his feet because we did it with all our might to honor him. You see, this was a statement that Queen Victoria, which was Queen Elizabeth II's great, great grandmother, said this quote, and then Elizabeth II repeated it. It says, one of the chaplains of Her Late Majesty Queen Victoria had been preaching on the second coming of the Lord. And afterwards, in conversation, she said to the chaplain, Oh, how I wish that the Lord would come in my lifetime. Why, asked the apt chaplain, does your majesty feel this very earnest desire? And the queen replied with quivering lips, and her whole countenance lighted up by deep emotion. I should so love to lay my crown at his feet. Do you live your life in a way that when the Lord comes, you want to say whatever you have, you just want to lay it at his feet? Like Matthew was saying on Sunday when he was preaching, he says, you know, he just wants to lay his whole self like a dog with the master that he loves, just wants to be at his feet. 
just to be at the feet of Jesus just to know he loves us and to just give him our love that's the most that we can give the most that God wants from us is our love it's not in the service but yet the service shows our love in Colossians 3 16 through 17 it says this ah uh, where am I right here Sorry, this Bible is a little bit different. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It goes down in 23 and says... And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. That is who we serve. If you ask Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life, then let him be Lord of your life. Serve him joyfully. No one loves you more than him. One of the songs, and actually at her funeral, there's so much more I want to say. At her funeral, they sang different psalms. Um, this is something that the prophet, excuse me, as the procession of the coffin moved through Abbey, the choir of Westminster Abbey sang the funeral sentences. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord, from John 11, 25 and 26. I know that my Redeemer liveth, Job 19, 25 through 27. We brought nothing into this world, William Croft, from 1 Timothy 6, 7, and Job 1, 21. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Revelation 14, 13. There was a song that she loved. Again, there's so much more here that she had. They read the scriptures. If you can write this down. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 26 and 53. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 26 and 53. Psalms 42, 1 through 7. John 14, 1 through 6. So that was Psalms 42, 1 through 7. John 14, 1 through 6. It'll give you a reason to open your Bible today and look at these things. She chose to live her life every way she could to honor the Lord. Maybe tomorrow I'll read some more things that I had found out about her. Make up your mind to live your life to honor God. It doesn't matter what others do. It doesn't matter what others say. With what He's given you, honor Him. Be content in whatever state you're in like Paul did. Like Paul and Silas in prison shackled down. They could still worship God. And God moved on their behalf. You see, I couldn't help but think how at a time that the world is turning so much against God, all during Queen Elizabeth's funeral, the word of God was preached. The story of Christ was given. Even at the end of her life, here on this earth, the last things people are going to remember is that her life wanted to honor God. That she put her trust in God. That was the reason that she was so loved was because the love of Christ was in her. Let the life, let the love of Christ dwell in you richly. Let others see Jesus in you because there is no other way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice.